Hello and welcome or welcome back. In today's mindful movement sequence we will pay close attention how we feel in close contact with the floor, particularly the distribution of pressure along the spine, ribs and shoulder blades. We will connect distant parts like ankles and neck or pelvis and shoulders and also do some interesting mini moves that involve cross-body coordination. All this will result in more fluid and well-connected actions and of course in an improved overall well-being, a more flexible chest and better breathing. If that sounds good to you, I invite you to come to rest on your back and follow along. Yes, so hard floor. On a hard floor we can feel our back and the floor quite detailed. And speaking of which, so just try to feel how you rest against the floor, how the floor is supporting you. And particularly in, at your shoulder blades and your chest. And for the starting position, to assume the starting position, of this sequence, please stand your feet. So, but keep resting on your back. So you just stand your feet and wear. Uh, choose, <laughs> this needs to make sense as well. Uh, choose a place for your feet where you will later be able to lift your pelvis towards the ceiling. So there's better and worse positions and think about lifting your pelvis and where do the feet need to go so probably very close to your sit bones or to your pelvis in order to support you like support beams yes this image but at first just the starting position Feel how your feet are standing and how you're resting. And then the movement, the movement is just to roll or rock your pelvis backwards a tiny little bit. So you can think of your spine, 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 from your head down to your pelvis and then the backbone. <laughs> And then the little tailbone, the last bit of a tail. This very, the lowest vertebra start to lift them off the floor. And back again. And the movement is one part, but the ability or our task to sense is another part and the sensing part, the feeling, should be as big or equal to the movement part. So you're not using movement as a medicine, like something you swallow or you take and you don't really care or mind how it works. No, no this is different. We, the feeling and sensing is equally important to the movement. And Roll your pelvis backwards and after it doesn't roll anymore, start to lift, lift your pelvis. So that's why you need to have your feet in a good position. So the pelvis rolls backwards and then it lifts off a tiny little bit. And what can you sense in your back? So about the pressure, more pressure against the feet for sure and then more pressure where at your lower back, your middle back depends on how high you lift your pelvis and maybe it also depends on where you look at if you, your face is turned towards the screen or maybe you can try to turn the head to the other direction when you lift your pelvis, maybe that makes, does it make a difference? 
So how much detail do we need to feel? And that's the amount of detail. We need to feel the tiny, tiny, tiniest differences. How do you even lift the pelvis? How does that work? It's like a very old habit, something we learned as a baby. One of the first movements maybe to press the feet into the floor and to arch the back. To be at some point able to sit up and stand, to be able to arch the back. And how much pressure did your parents put on you to be able to stand soon? So maybe that's something you learned under pressure <laughs> with a lot of expectations from everyone around you. So now no expectations, just feel how you roll the pelvis and are there parts you're missing? So can you, if we, we could use the spine as a tool of measurement with all the vertebrae and every vertebrae has a little mountain in the back, a processus, a little spike and maybe you can feel those spikes pressing against the floor and do you miss one vertebra or can you feel the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, the first lumbar and then the twelfth thoracic, eleven, ten, nine and upwards we go. Can you feel every little bit lifting or pressing stronger against the floor and then it's another part so it needs to be slow. We learn to feel and at the same time of course we learn to make this or we, we observe. We try to improve how we do this movement So maybe in order to lift the pelvis, you can feel you have to push the knees downwards towards the feet. Or maybe you start with one knee first and this makes the pelvis roll. Then you take the other knee and then this makes the pelvis lift. How much of a side bending of a twist do you have? How strongly do you need to engage your belly muscles, your back muscles? How far can you even lift your pelvis? Are your feet still in a position, in the best position or can you place them now a little bit better when you lift your pelvis bit by bit and actually this Maybe you discover there's so much you can do with your spine without interfering the lifting, supporting maybe the lifting. And lowering. And of course, at any time you can take a break. Of course. And then start again. And maybe the next time you start, you can do it slower and look at more details, be able to observe. Ah, there's a movement here. There's a bit that's not clear where everything goes together, but maybe you can look deeper into a certain area or you can find movement in places that didn't move a minute ago.
can then lift your pelvis more and more again, lift it off as far off as it's comfortable, but you should have like a good space between your buttocks and the floor. So at least a bit. <laughs> How much is a bit? A fist or two length. And then stay in that position, that's our new starting position, and move the knees a little bit to the right. So both knees a little bit to the right and back. Or maybe you can start with one knee and then follow up with the other knee to the right and back. And yeah, why not to the left and back and see what we can do with the introduction of this movement. So we introduced a new movement and now there's more things to observe. So roll your head together with your knees. So knees move to the right, head rolls to the right and back and knees move to the left, head rolls to the left. Press on your stand more on your heels so the support comes from your heels, maybe, or a little bit in front of your heels. So you're certainly not standing on your toes, more on your heels, and then the knees to the right and to the left. And if it's hard, bring down your pelvis and then bring it up again. Just you can see, wow, just a second of a intermission of a break can can help already. So it's good glutes training, isn't it? But if you move your knees to the right, you can feel you're not in the center of your spine anymore, but you move a little bit to the right. Or of course, depends on the curve of your spine and how high you lift your pelvis, onto which places you can roll on your back. And if you can feel your spine, when are you on your spine and when are you on your ribs? So you become more aware of your back. <laughs> this, we, we are used to look at the mirror and we see our front and we have a very clear image of our front, but our back highly neglected. So now there's a chance to make up a little bit for that neglection just to feel when you press more onto, for example, to the left and you know, your ribs to the left, which area or is it your shoulder blade? And when do you roll up onto your spine? And when do you roll down onto the other side? And do you have a side bending? So when you move your knees to the right and roll your head to the right, do you shorten your right side and lengthen your left side of your chest? Or, or what is happening? How do you do it? And then when you lower your pelvis to the floor, see if you already feel a bit more about this movement, if you're feeling your ability to feel and sense has improved. And then we take a rest.
and then stand your, <laughs> before we fall asleep, stand your feet again, see where they go. And now we do something with the arms, we take them out of the way, or maybe we make a constraint, so put your palms together, like clapping, <laughs> or making fire, when you have a stick in between your Kindle, in between your palms, and uh, extend your arms, have your elbows locked so that the tips of your fingers are pointing towards the ceiling. And then again, roll. So does, is this stressful already? Is this like introducing so much stress that you can't focus on your pelvis or can you? Yes. So how is it to put more pressure on the feet and to uh, roll the pelvis and to lift the pelvis bit by bit when your arms, when you have to hold your arms like this? Mm -hmm. And then keep your elbows locked and your hands together and again move your knees to the right a bit and allow your head to roll to the right and you can start to point with your the tips of your fingers a little bit to the right so it's a little bit of a roll and we just want to see how does the this arm position changes the movement or the stress level or your general perception of yourself or maybe the ability to, to do to do something like to roll more precisely or more consciously can you feel can you feel that that the introduction of this arm position changes the same movement we did before or does it and to the left So ever so slowly, <laughs> maybe you can enjoy like a, the ability, we're talking about improving ability, the ability to enjoy a movement. So we are far away from producing a movement in order to achieve something, but we are into the world of feeling and sensing, being able to enjoy, to approve, approve of yourself, to acknowledge your ability to do this kind of strenuous work with lifting your pelvis and arching your back and rolling and feeling and still is there a side bend is there a twist where can you roll onto and you're doing great so if you feel something you can assess something nobody's going to correct you nobody's coming at you and say no you need to do this or uh, actually not even in a helpful way way you have to figure it out yourself what am I doing here? Does this feel good? <laughs> At least. <laughs> and then take a, a short rest or continue for a minute with these movements. As you like. So then let's uh, try this again to stand your feet and let's, let us continue a bit with the arm position. So have your arms out to the side when you lift your pelvis and move your knees and roll your head or have your pelvis at different height levels so you can so maybe when you have your elbows on the floor you can help with the elbows to lift the pelvis and with your knees when you think of your knees going down and away and left and right yes and try how this is different with your arms out to the side then how is it with your arms up to the ceiling the same movement how does the arm movements and the posture of your arms disturb or help this the same movement or maybe if you put your arms around you, your left hand on your right armpit and your right hand on your left 
shoulder over your left armpit and see if you have this kind of self-hug as opposed to having your arms straight or having your arms on the floor or maybe you can come up with different arm positions yourself and see how does this make sense, help, oh, help the chest to become softer suddenly or help you to breathe more freely just by playing around with your arms with this kind of movement. And if you roll to one side, then the shoulder blade of the other side lifts off the floor. So quite a few things to explore. But then we continue with the lesson, bring down your yourself to the floor again on your back take a short rest on your back to have a moment of doing nothing just feeling sensing being just being here resting Then again, stand your feet. So bring your feet to standing. And lift your pelvis bit by bit until your pelvis is up. And you press with your feet and press upwards. So push your spine with the help of your feet as if you would push yourself on the floor upwards, but not quite that strong. So we don't want to <laughs> swift, swift, we don't want to clean the floor. We don't want to <laughs> push ourselves up on the floor, but in that, with that idea, that direction. So, so shortly before you start to slide, just push your spine up on the floor and then stop pushing. Or maybe you can rock your spine and have your arms we didn't do anything with the arms, so the arms just on the floor, the arms resting on the floor, and you push your spine up, up, up a bit. Maybe not wild, but just very controlled, push up, and your arms, while you do these movements, your arms stay on the floor, just your arms just rest on the floor. Yes? <laughs> and if you start to think of the image of this movement, when you push from your feet up, in the beginning of Harry Potter, in the very beginning of the book, there's a scene where Mrs. Dursley, where, where Mrs. Dursley is described as this very thin woman with a long neck, and the long neck is helping her craning over the neighbor's fence <laughs> to spy on the neighbors. So maybe that's a nice image or a funny image because it's meant to be funny in the book that you push your spine so the spine becomes long and it's like a telescope is craning out if you would be standing this would be the movement of pulling your shoulders down but instead of pulling the shoulders down we just keep the arms in place and push up <laughs> so the spine is going through, or the, the chest is pushed up, and the leg, neck is becoming longer. But not in a forced manner, more in a curious manner. What are the neighbors 
doing? What is happening in the neighbor's house? <laughs> Does the neighbor have a new landmower or a new Weber's grill? We need to know. <laughs> so you push up and then oop, the neighbor is coming out. You stop pushing up <laughs> and then you push again up and down. And as we look around the neighbor's garden, <laughs> just a joke, but so turn your head to the right when you push your spine up or turn your head to the left when you push your spine up. And actually our main focus, or at least half of the focus is on our sensing. So when you push up, can you push in a curve to the left when you have your head turned to the right or you push in a curve to the right when you have your head turned to the left? No? How does this pushing up change with your head turning or maybe with your arm position, this rocking? So now is it starting to become easier to lift your pelvis and to push yourself up. And then maybe we take a rest again and ah, relax down to the floor. Maybe lift your head to look to your feet for once, for once, for one time. Just one time, look down to your feet, lift your head high. So. We have this strong extension and now a little bit of flexion and then we can rest. How is it to rest? How is your breathing? How does your chest lie on the floor, your arms? And then like in a previous lesson, just stay resting on the floor, but bring your legs together. Yeah, so this is working the adductors. You bring your legs together, you hold your legs, so the inside edges of the feet are together and the knees are closer together and you press your legs together and see when you do this, does this affect your breathing? <sighs> is it more difficult to breathe at in general, or is it maybe easier to breathe in when you press your legs together or to breathe out? And if you have done the previous lessons with the leg work, how is it now Did it for you in this lesson? And then uh, maybe short rest and then uh, hold your legs together again and start to extend and flex your ankles. So you, the forefoot, the toes come closer to your nose <laughs> or they move further away. So you're moving your ankles and uh, take a rest anytime you need or don't press your legs together so hard, just don't overwork yourself. Again, the focus is also on feeling and how we do this movement. And we are not a robot. We are human and everything is connected. And if you extend and flex your ankles, maybe you can feel this movement of the feet also has a repercussion in your spine and in your head. So. Not so much because you push the floor with your heels, but just this movement of your ankles, if you rock them, if you do it faster, maybe you can feel, maybe you can experience, notice how your whole body is rocking. 
<laughs> it's a fast version of your spine up and down in between your shoulder blades. So again, you don't use your heels to push on the floor, but it's more just the rocking of your... Can it be in isolation or can we make a connection? Of course, if you rock your, the back of your heels on the floor, you can rock the spine more easily. And how is it if you, again, turn the head to the right or turn the head to the left? We have two sides of the body, a right side on the outside and a left side on the outside. A slight bending to the left or a slight bending to the right and the rocking of the spine in between the shoulder blades to lengthen, to do the Mrs. Dursley movement. <laughs> And then one more rest, see this little rocking, how did it affect your mood, <laughs> your energy levels, your breathing, how you rest on the floor. Such a nice way to rest, isn't it? Now, we are almost at the end of the movement sequence, but maybe we can add one more thing, one more round. Like when a race was over <laughs> or a performance was over, then maybe the actors come out one more time or run, a, run one more circle. So bring your feet to standing, see where they go now and Put more and more pressure on your heel so that your pelvis who is rolling can it can it roll and then at some point it lifts mm. and how aware conscious are you are those terms interchangeable can you feel or sense your back where you lean against where there's pressure, how it affects your breathing, how easy it is to expand your belly or to expand your chest. <laughs> and you can move, or how easy it is to sustain that position or to play with that position. Bring your knees right and left. Let your head roll right and left. And then bring the palms of your hands together, extend your arms towards the ceiling and maybe the hands also can go up <laughs> together with the pushing of the spine upwards or downwards. So instead of left and right or right and left together with the head, maybe this can be combined to a little circle, play around in a circle. But this, I mean, we can play with this a lot more, like differentiate the head movements from the knee movements, so the knees to the right, the head to the left, or the knees to the left, the head to the right. <laughs> Circles with the arms in the same direction like the knees or in opposite directions. To head move together with the arms and the knees in the opposite direction or the arms go in the opposite direction of the knees and the head. So <laughs> these are just ideas I want to give you to play with, to go deeper into differentiating, into deeper into becoming more aware of your chest and your the relationship to your breathing and 
side bending, twist, extension, flexion, to get to know, have a, something to do, movements, in order to feel, be able to improve your ability to feel and sense and become more proficient, <laughs> a more proficient embodied being as a homework, if you like, or something to explore. And then one last rest. <sighs> Feel how it is to rest now. How, how it is to be now. <laughs> So, I think we have done and said, <laughs> I have said everything I wanted to say. <clears throat> and I hope you have experienced everything you wanted to experience with this movement sequence. So you learned something, a little bit of entertainment and you feel better. And the last thing we need to do is to get up, see if that's still possible. If we can come to the vertical. How does it feel in standing? Good question. How does the spine feel? Is the spine longer? Can the shoulders be more relaxed on the chest? Let's find out. Please come up to stand. definitely worth it or was worth it wasn't it and i hope with the ideas and insights you got you have something to play with and to work with and i have to say thank you for your support for helping me to make these videos to make them become possible thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video